So for this video, um, I'm going to talk about pressure and height. Um, for those of you in the in, in uh, some of the classes may have actually done this in class already, uh, but um, it's it's a good it's a good review for us to go over for for everyone. So um, the basic question we have is here: we found out that we we know that the pressure at all points um, is the same if we're at the same height. But what we're going to ask here is, well, what happens if we have some column of water? All right, we know that the pressure isn't the same at all points in that water. Um, and so one thing we're going to ask is, how does that pressure vary with the water? And so we're going to look right at the bottom of this figure right here. If you notice right here, um, there's, uh, there's this, um, uh, this little dotted circle here. We're looking at that bottom area. And we're going to ask a very simple question, which is, what is the pressure at the bottom of that area? Now we know some things, if we actually draw a free body diagram of that, that area, we know that the main thing that's basically contributing to the pressure at that point, and basically the thing that's pushing on that bottom part, is the weight of the water. Basically the weight of the water is all pushing down at that bottom part. And we know what weight is, or, for, or force of gravity, it's just, it's just mg. And so using that, we're basically gonna be able to calculate um, what pressure is in water at, at, in, a, in a container of any height or any, any possible shape of container. So again, we're just gonna start with the force at the bottom of, that, um, of this container is just mg. It's basically the force of the water on the, the bottom of, the, 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 the bottom of that, that cylinder. All right, so it's just the, 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 the weight of the water, okay? Um, now we can actually write the weight of the water a little differently. So instead of writing it as a mass, I'm gonna write it in as density times volume. If you don't remember, please go back and look. Density is just mass over volume, and so mass is just density times volume. And so it's just a rewriting using the definition of density. Um, and furthermore, we know that uh, the, the volume, and this is, this is especially, it's, it's easy to see with a cylinder that the volume of a cylinder is just its area times its height. I mean, you see that in the figure right at the right. Uh, but this is actually generally true just for any, um, for any object. Uh, the volume of any object, uh, you know, any cup that's containing water, any dam, any whatever you're talking about, it's always equal to the area over the height. The only thing that gets a little complicated is if it's a funny looking shape, you have to change the area as you're moving at the different points in height. But for, for kind of regular systems like this, this, um, this, uh, this cylinder, it's just area times height. And again, this, this, it turns out this derivation doesn't matter what the shape of the actual container that contains your water is. So we're talking about force, but what we're actually interested in is pressure. Um, and pressure, of course, is force over area. And so the nice thing is if we actually rewrite our force equation instead of pressure by basically, we, we just divide by area on both sides. And so if we divide by area on both sides, we get pressure on the left side. And on the right side, we get rho A H G divided by A. We're basically just dividing the right side by H. We just divided both sides by H. And you notice something very quickly, which is that these A's cancel each other out, and we get in the end that the pressure uh, of a fluid is just dependent on rho, its density, okay, so it's just the density of the water, times G, which is our normal gravitational constant, times H, all right? So it's just dependent on the height of that object. And that's basically the whole point. That's the whole result. Pressure is equal to rho G H is equal to the density of whatever fluid you're looking at, the gravity and the height, okay? Let's just do a quick example um, uh, to, to, um, to illustrate this point. Um, but before we get to that, I wanna point something out. What, what I wanna do is basically calculate the pressure in some fluid. Before we do that though, we have to realize something, which is that uh, the pressure that we've written here is actually just the pressure due to the water, all right? Um, but in, in reality, we exist under a huge column of air. All right, um, we, we here at sea level always have a bunch of air way above us. Um, it turns out we have a ton of air above us, uh, 10 to the fifth newtons worth of uh, uh, air, or, um, or that's uh, you know, approximately 10 to the fourth kilograms or 10,000 kilograms of air is kind of pressing on us, um, on, on every square meter of us at all times. Um, if we wanna actually talk about what the total pressure is in any particular thing, we're gonna to have to include 
this what what's called this atmospheric pressure, which is just one times ten to the one point zero one times ten to the fifth pascals um, at at um, atmosphere at at um, uh, basically ground level, which is where most of us live. Of course, if you go to the Rocky Mountains, this changes a little bit, but okay, for the most part, this is a good this is a good number for us to deal with. So what we're going to ask is what the pressure is at the bottom of a pool. Um, there you see Professor Puckett, um, my children, and a couple of physics students all playing in the pool. Um, don't they look like they're having fun? Okay. Um, so let's look at this pool, okay? Um, my pool is, is relatively shallow. shallow. It's, it's a, a, a little over a meter. Um, uh, and let's talk about what the pressure is. Well, we know at the top, the pressure is atmospheric pressure because, again, Every, as long as you're not, if you're standing basically out in the air, you're, you're being influenced or you're being pressed on by atmospheric pressure. Basically, every single part of your body right now uh, is feeling approximately 10 to the fifth pascals on all different parts of it. Um, and the same thing goes for the pool. The top of that pool um, is feeling that atmospheric pressure. But if we look at the bottom of the pool, it's fear, feeling the pressure from the atmosphere plus the additional weight or pressure from the water itself. So it's still that 1.01 times 10 to the fifth pascals plus our, our equation that we just learned, our rho GH equation, um, that gives us the total pressure from the water. And so we basically add the pressure from the atmosphere, the pressure from the water, and you'll get the total pressure at the bottom of that pool. Uh, so we can just do that calculation, 1.01 times 10 to the fifth pascal. Density of water is approximately 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. Um, we put in gravity, we put in uh, the, the depth of my pool, um, and we find that in the end, um, the, the pressure at the top of the pool is 1.01 times 10 to the fifth pascals. The pressure at the bottom of the pool is 1.12 times 10 to the fifth, fifth pascals. It's not that much more. Um, it's not that much water, to be, to be blunt. It's, it's only about four feet deep. Um, and so there, there wasn't a huge increase in pressure, but there is a noticeable one. You can, you can see that it actually does show up. Um, if you were to go, you know, uh, you, you know, closer to 10 meters down, um, uh, you would actually about double um, atmospheric pressure. So it would be very noticeable. Anyone who's, who's, who's ever dove to the bottom of a very deep pool knows that you start to feel that pressure as you get further and further down. But in this case, it hasn't increased it that much. It's increased it by about 10%. Now sometimes uh, we, we, um, we get a little lazier. We don't want to basically have to deal with the fact that we always have to include this 10 to the fifth pascals. So often we use what's called gauge pressure. And what gauge pressure does is we basically assume, okay, we know everything is at atmospheric pressure basically that's sitting here on the earth. Now let's just talk about the extra pressure that we have in addition to, um, in addition to the, the atmospheric pressure. Um, and so the gauge pressure would just be 1.176 times 10 to the fourth pascals. Or basically, this is just the P water part of the pressure. It's just the extra pressure we have um, in addition to the atmospheric pressure. And so if you ever see something asking for what the gauge pressure is, um, it's just this excess pressure. And that's often what you're talking about um, when you're talking about, for instance, the, the pressure um, inside of um, you know, uh, tires or uh, you know, when you measure the pressure of um, things like in your hose, like what your hose pressure is like. It's, it's almost always gauge pressure, and that's why they call it gauge pressure, because it's actually the pressure that, that's most often read in gauges. Um, so that's our quick introduction to pressure. I hope that's useful. Um, go do the problems, see what you can get done, and I'll see you in class.